Hi, I'm Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. In this video series, we're going to cover the male reproductive system. We can divide the male reproductive system into three components. We have the two testes, one testis in each testicle. Some people interchange testes with testicles. It's not quite accurate because within the testicles, in addition to the testes, we also have the epididymis, of which there are two then. There are leaving from the epididymis, we have the two ducti deferens or the vas deferens, two ejaculatory ducts that then will merge to form, to merge with the urethra, the single urethra. In addition to the ductal system and the testes, we also have the sex glands that make the seminal fluid and that includes two seminal vesicles on the back of the bladder, a single prostate gland. Notice there's no R here. It is prostate and not prostrate, which means something very different. And then we have two bulbourethral glands, which go with a synonym as well, which I'll point out when we get to that point. Now, when I use the term from now on, semen, or when we talk about semen, just to make sure that all of you are clear on that, semen mostly includes the sperm cells, and we'll also learn exactly what meiotic phase they're in, together with the seminal fluid that is produced by the sex glands listed here on the left. There's also a little bit of a, a fluid produced by some other cells, but these are definitely the main components. Let's now take a look at all these different structures that we just listed from the testes to the ductal system to the sex glands by use of this picture, which is a mid-sagittal cut of the male. Let's first get oriented. Clearly here we have a testicle. Here's the penis. And then here we have the bladder, which gives rise to the urethra, which will then run down the penis. Here we have the pubic symphysis that interconnects the two pubic bones. Here we have the anal canal that then becomes the rectum right there. Okay, so within the testicles we have um, two structures. The testicles sit in this skin-like structure we call the scrotum and so here we have the egg-shaped testis where sperm cells are uh, made and they then mature in this structure which we refer to as the epididymis. Once the um, sperm cells are mature enough and uh, ejacu the ejaculation reflex kicks in, they will literally by means of peristaltic contractions of smooth muscles inside of this vast deferens move all the way into the body. So from the epididymis here, the vas deferens originates, it moves into the body across the bladder like so. And on the posterior aspect of the bladder, the vas deferens enlarges somewhat, and we call it the ampulla of the vas deferens or the ductus deferens, uh, whatever you prefer. And of course, there's two of each one of these. The vas deferens will then become the ejaculatory duct right here which then merges with the urethra. So clearly the urethra in the male has two functions. The first function being that it guides the urine out of the body. The second function being that it guides the sperm cells together with the seminal fluid called semen out of the body. So what produces the seminal fluid? Well, right here nearby each ampulla of the ductus deferens we see a seminal vesicle. So there would be one on the other side of the bladder as well. The, these seminal vesicles produce most of the seminal fluid. Then there's the single prostate right here, uh, this chestnut shaped prostate in which we find the ejaculatory duct with, which merges with the urethra. And then finally we have another pair of glands that sit at the bulb of the penis. So if we look at the penis here, 
right here where the penis literally begins, still inside of the body somewhat, we refer to that as the bulb. And so this round structure here is one of the two bulbo-urethral glands. Bulbo-urethral because they um, sit near the bulb of the penis and also close to the urethra, obviously. As a matter of fact, they have their ducts guiding the secretion, their secretion into the urethra. So a quick review of how the sperm cells travel. They are made in the testes. We'll study that. They'll then mature in the epididymis. They then travel up the vas deferens, the ampulla of the vas deferens, the ejaculatory duct, and then out of the urethra. One last thing I want to point out. Again, here we have the anal canal from the rectum. We get into the anal canal here. Notice the location of the rectum versus the prostate gland. This is the reason for why the prostate gland um, in a male can be palpated by means of inserting a finger into the anal canal. Um, prostate sits right nearby that rectum there. There's a reason for why the testes are located outside of the body in the testicles and protected in this skin-like structure called the scrotum. And the reason is that spermatogenesis or the, the meiotic divisions that need to occur to create the haploid sperm cells, that can only occur at a temperature that is lower than the core body. So normally the body temperature is of a human being is um, about 37 degrees Celsius. And notice that the temperature of the testes needs to be at least two, if not four degrees Celsius lower. So that's the prime reason for why these testes need to be outside of the body. Now, depending on the outside temperature, the scrotum can actually bring the testes closer or not to the body um, and protect the temperature of the testicles environment. And so there are two muscles involved. We have the so-called dartus muscle, which we see located right here. That can make the skin of the, the scrotum more crinkly. While we also have the cremaster muscle here, that's a skeletal muscle, which when it contracts, it literally will elevate the testicles such that they're closer to the body and therefore the testes stay warmer. Now if we look at the picture on the very right here, I wanted to point out a few more things. So once again we have here the testis with the epididymis, but another thing to point out is that we have something called the spermatic cord, and the spermatic cord holds a variety of things. It's going to have arteries, as well as veins, as well as nerve vessels, lymphatic vessels, lots of things entering and leaving here. And so collectively, including, let's not forget, sorry, the ductus or the vas deferens. So in addition to the blood vessels, nerve and lymphatic vessels, we also have the ductus deferens to form the so-called spermatic cord. We're going to take a closer look at the anatomy of the testes with the epididymis that hug them in the next video.